item three. The king, Naik, addressing the subjects of the sun and the moon, told his captivated and by then very animated and regaled audience that the Quran knows that the sun is a source of original light and that the moon has reflected light contrary to the unscientific Bible. He explained to his enthralled Muhammadan audience that the Quranic Arabic words Nur means reflected light while Siraj is a blazing light. Al-Furqan 25.61 Blessed is he who made constellations in the skies and placed them therein a lamp, Sirajan, and the moon giving light, Muniran. Tabaraka alladhi ja'ala fi samai burujan wa ja'ala fiha Sirajan wa qamaran Munira. Yunus 10.5 It is he who made the sun to be a shining glory, Ziyaan, and the moon to be a light, Nuran, of beauty. And Nur 24.35 Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Nurun. The parable of his light, Nurihi, is as if there were a niche and within it a lamp. Light upon light. Nurun ala Nurin. Allah doth guide whom he will to his light. Li Nurihi. Al Ahzab 33.46 And as one who invites to Allah's grace by his leave and as a lamp. Sirajan, spreading light, Muniran, Nuh 71.16, and made the moon a light, Nuran, in their midst, and made the sun as a glorious lamp, Sirajan. In all the Arabic dictionaries, Nur means light, and Siraj means lamp. In none of them is the word reflected light mentioned as a meaning. The concept of reflection of light did not exist in the intellect nor in the language of the Arabs at the time of Muhammad. It is Zakir alone who is falsely telling us that they did, with his personal interpretation of these verses, so that he can justify his attacks on the Bible while giving false credit to the Quran. Dear listeners, I shall now use Zakir Naik's metaphor, but in a different context. That comparing the Torah to the Quran is like comparing the original light of the blazing sun to the reflected light of the moon. I can go on repeating each and every one of his critique of the biblical records. Similar assaults on the Bible are made by thousands of other so-called scholars of Muhammadan Islam. I shall not waste a single further moment countering his or their infantile attacks on the Torah and the Gospels because each and every single one of his and their arguments representing the core foundation of their methodical attacks is utterly demolished when we ask the following very simple questions. A. Muhammad in his Quran repeatedly mentions that the earlier revelations, those to Moses and Jesus, the Torah and the Gospels, are divinely revealed by Allah to these prophets. The Quran also tells his believers that these earlier revelations are a witness to its own veracity and alleged divinity. B. Since this is the fact of the case, how then can Zakir Naik, who believes in Allah as God and the Quran as the word of Allah, argue and dispute these very revelations from Allah with its followers? How can he tell the world that they are actually not divinely revealed, ungodly? How dare he contradict the very Quran that he believes in? Does Allah deceive Muhammad in the Quran? Is Allah, the God of the Quran, a liar? On what basis, on, on what documentary proofs does Zakir or other Muhammadans have to assert that the Torah and Gospels have been corrupted or altered by their followers? Can he show us and the world these original records upon which he and the likes of him base their arguments? Since in Muhammad's days they were not corrupted, as otherwise he would not have told his followers to believe in them, then they would have had to have been corrupted after Muhammad's time. How can any intelligent or sane person contemplate such an unbelievable scenario? How could all the scholars of the Jews and the priests of Christianity have left aside all their differences and conspired to corrupt or alter every single Hebrew, Greek, Latin and Syriac Bible from all over the known world, in all the countries of Christendom and beyond?
What, pray tell us, would have been the purpose for such an absurd and preposterous hallucinogenic and mythical act? Since the Quran asserts that the Bible was revealed by Allah, then Muhammadan believers must accept any and all contradictions and or unscientific statements mentioned therein as part and parcel of Allah's words, and hence can neither be questioned nor criticized, just like the Quran. Zakir Naik, like all fundamentalist Muhammadan Muslims, has to resort to violating logic, contorting sanity, raping knowledge, twisting history, deforming morality, and uprooting intellect to achieve his and their otherwise unachievable agenda of deceiving their followers as well as others into believing that the Quran is superior to previous revelations and is divine. Zakir Naik has to choose one of these only two possible scenarios, either of which would destroy him, his arguments, and his Quran. Magicians use sleight of hand to distract their audience. Zakir Naik uses the sleight of the forked tongue to achieve the same purpose. To be or not to be is the final nail in the coffin of each and every single argument or attack made upon the divinity of the Bible by the followers of Muhammad. Either the Bible was corrupted before or after the time of Muhammad. There is no other possible time, either before or after. The arguments of the so-called scholars of Muhammad and Islam fall only between the hammer and the anvil of their own lies and deceptions. The whole bodyguard of lies that protects the Quran is irrevocably destroyed based on answering this nightmarish Muhammadan Muslim catch-22. Whichever answer they choose brings about the complete unraveling of their arguments about the Bible as well as proving the ungodliness of the Quran. Dear listeners, so-called believers and unbelievers, we have tested Zak and Naik's knowledge and veracity and found both of them wanting. Zakir, Naik, and any other follower of Muhammad on planet Earth, if they are as certain as they claim about their allegedly perfect Quran, should take up our challenge in chapter 153 or on our website and win, if that is at all humanly possible.